Hi, my name is David Fisman. I'm a Canadian physician and epidemiologist, and my uh, current uh, work is as a uh, professor of epidemiology at the University of Toronto. Um, I'm part of the, the, the organizing committee for, for the ECMID meeting. I've, I've had the privilege of being part of, um, part of uh, the committee for the last number of years. And it's, it's been an incredible opportunity to see how these meetings come together from the inside and also to make some really great friends and to network a bit with colleagues from uh, literally ar around the globe. Um, we're all in, <laughs> in the middle of a bit of an interesting time in terms of communicable diseases at the moment. Uh, I'm recording this February 10th, 2021. Uh, we're having a bit of subsidence in our COVID epidemic in Canada. Uh, looks like our second wave is tapering off. But of course, as, as with many of you, we're starting to appreciate that novel viral variants are starting to uh, outcompete uh, their uh, uh, the former strains. And uh, so we're probably looking forward to yet another wave here later in the spring. With that, it's really exciting to look at the program for the forthcoming ECMID meeting, uh, which I think will be a hybrid meeting in, uh, in Vienna this coming July. Uh, some folks will be there in person, uh, lucky ducks, hopefully vaccinated. Uh, some of us uh, will more likely be joining virtually. Um, but regardless, something that I was very excited about, um, I, 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 I didn't wanna do a vlog about uh, about COVID, although that's mostly what we've been working on of late, uh, something that um, something that I think COVID has taught us is that there are some big threats that can disrupt the way we live, um, and some of them are uh, communicable disease-related, emerging infections, pandemics. Some of them relate to environmental degradation and anthropogenic environmental change, climate change. And some of them actually lie at the intersection uh, between those two, where we have climate change and environmental change as really important drivers of emergence of infectious diseases at the human animal interface. We know that about three quarters or more emerging infections do emerge at human animal interface. COVID's a great exemplar of the paradigm. But there are uh, environmental change and climate change influence this process in important ways. So I was very excited to see that Arturo Casa de Val is going to be a keynote speaker. I, I'm a fan of Professor Casa de Val and have learned a lot from him. Um, I, I, I know that he has some really interesting ideas about Candida auris and thermotolerance and the role that warming uh, surface waters, uh, particularly in, in sort of marshland areas, may have played in actually selecting out thermotolerant yeasts that, uh, you know, are well adapted to humans because they come from a warmer environment. Um, and I, I think if you look at fungal disease and, and climate change, there's a lot of action in terms of emerging infectious diseases that may actually also reflect climate change. In North America, we see we don't do particularly good surveillance for blastomycosis in North America. We do seem to be uh, having increasing rates of blasto. Coccidioidomycosis is much better documented. And again, you know, those higher temperatures and droughts and more dust may be related to, um, to uh, surges in coxy. Um, but of course, you know, uh, we have uh, climatic impacts probably on bacterial resistance. Uh, my colleague here in Canada, Derek McFadden, has done some great work on that. Uh, we see climate, uh, the hand of climate change in, in changing uh, distribution of vector-borne diseases. Um, uh, obviously, uh, range extension of Lyme disease uh, here in North America, but also um, mosquito-borne diseases moving into I was going to say new countries, new hemispheres. We've got a bunch of Western hemisphere emerge, emergences of arboviral diseases over the last 15 to 20 years. So, you know, as, as communicable disease experts, climate change is something that's worthy of our attention. And I'm really glad to see that Professor Cassidy will be, will be talking about his ideas. I also think there are parallels between um, uh, climate change and 
the current pandemic in other ways. What we've seen with the current pandemic is that being proactive, when you're faced with threats that grow exponentially, being proactive is at a time when the threat remains abstract is so much more effective than being reactive once you actually see the manifestations that come to pass. We see that with jurisdictions that react before their ICUs are full in terms of trying to reduce COVID transmission. Um, it, we will see very much the same sort of dynamic with climate change. Although in as much as some countries have done better than others, um, on control of COVID, that's sort of within a local sphere of influence in terms of changing that outcome. <laughs> We're all in the same boat on climate change. We only have one planet. So, um, you know, we're going to need to act collectively, the willing and the unwilling, uh, in order to forestall some of the really catastrophic effects of climate change on, on, on health and economies. So hopefully, so yeah, yeah, more, most likely virtually, but maybe in person, who knows, uh, in Vienna in July uh, 2021. It looks like an absolutely fantastic meeting. And kudos to Carla Seiler and the rest of the ECMID team uh, and Jacob Moran Gilad uh, for uh, captaining this ship from the, 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 the biomedical point of view. Uh, for for just doing hours of work to to make this this meeting the magnificent success that it will be. See you there. Bye.